All right, welcome to AP Psychology. Um, this is the first video as part of my AP Psychology class for the 2014-2015 year. Uh, if you're joining me, hopefully you are here to review for the AP exam, or maybe you just have some interest in psychology, or you're just wanting to know about psychology or where it all began. Um, hopefully, as these videos are recorded over time, they'll get better. Uh, this is the first video that I've ever done, so uh, bear with me a little bit. I'm still figuring out some other stuff. Uh, looking at my recording software right here, it looks like I have 15 minutes since I'm using a free trial version, so I'm going to try to go through this really briefly and just know some of these things, maybe some oversimplifications, but it is a good kind of foundation for um, kind of where does psychology begin. So. Um, first, kind of just looking at the evolution of psychology, what is psychology, what does it mean? Uh, in terms of the root words for psychology, you have psych, meaning uh, the human soul, mind, or spirit in Greek, or of course logos is general to study. So you combine those and you literally get the study of the mind, study of the soul, or study of the spirit. In terms of where psychology actually comes from, it is a combination of basic philosophers in the 1800s asking questions about the mind and you know, where do we come from just general philosophical type of thought but then also you have physiologists looking at body processes um, and so combined when uh, many of these people are kind of in the height of their fields suddenly in Germany where psychology is going to begin it just seems like there's this great opportunistic time for people to uh, start a new discipline and so that discipline happens to be psychology so just to review kind of some of the first major people and their contributions you have uh, German Wilhelm Wundt he's the first psychologist and considered the founder of psychology he basically starts a research lab in Leipzig in Germany and uh, there he tutors and trains a lot of other psychologists who will make their way around the world one famous one for Americans would be G. Stanley Hall. This guy is considered you know, early American psychologist, first American psychologist. Um, he will establish a research lab. He will set up a journal, in addition to also becoming the first president of the APA, which will be the American Psychological Association. Now, the APA is not large by any means at this time, but over the next couple of years as psychology begins to emerge as a real credible discipline uh, they see the membership rise to now current times there is uh, tens of thousands of members for females you have Mary Whitten Calkins she is the first APA president who is a female and you have Margaret Floyd Washburn who is the first female to receive a PhD in psychology and uh, there are some you know interesting stories behind both of those particularly for the first female PhD. So Mary Whitten Calkins would have received a first PhD in psychology as a woman. However, she was uh, attempting to get to Harvard for psychology. And at the time, Harvard did not accept female students for their PhD programs, so she could not get her doctorate from Harvard. They offered her a chance to go to another university, which I believe was Radcliffe, University and this is like a sister college for Harvard, but she turned it down. So uh, Margaret Floyd Washburn went on to get the first female PhD. So uh, two of the early schools of psychology that would really kind of kick it off. Early psychology focused a lot on sensation and perception. So if you are an AP student and you are kind of following along, eventually you will get to a unit on sensation and perception, but this is going to be some of the first things that psychologists look at. So those two schools of thought are structuralism and functionalism. And uh, basically you can see here structuralism underlined because it is really focusing on the structure of the consciousness and uh, consciousness meaning basically your mind so the structure of your consciousness and how exactly uh, the parts of it work together whereas functionalism is more of a focus on not really the individual parts of your consciousness but what is the overall function what is it supposed to do and so um, for structuralism, just going back one second, structuralism is really important for uh, its process of introspection, which is basically a version of experiencing something, seeing something, hearing something, tasting something, and smelling something, and then you 
Just say what you experience. What are you sensing? What is your experience? Is it pleasant? Is it unpleasant? It's basically no different than almost taking a survey and answering, do you agree? Do you disagree? Except this time you're kind of getting to give your own opinion of whatever you're experiencing or sens uh, sensing. Um, so for structuralism, your famous person who is kind of creating that will be Wilhelm Wundt and uh, another man named Edward B. Titchener. And then for functionalism, it's primarily contributed by William James. However, he is heavily influenced by Charles Darwin and his ideas of natural selection. Another area of psychology is called uh, Gestalt psychology, and this is um, basically the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And so if you take a look at these pictures here, what you'll see is basically a black square in the first picture and then nothingness in the second half of that picture, just a bunch of kind of Pac-Man like shaped symbols facing other directions. But when you look at that first picture, you have a square, but not really. It's just based on how you're perceiving it. So for Gestalt psychology, there are lots of principles to look at how we perceive certain things that are looking like they're there, but they're not really there. And so uh, we'll be covering this in depth more later on. Uh, another early pioneer for psychology uh, is Sigmund Freud, and out of anyone in this video, he may be the one person whose name is actually known to people who don't know much about psychology. But Sigmund Freud is uh, also really instrumental in the development of psychology. His main contribution is focusing on the unconscious mind, which uh, he believes impacts a lot of things, ranging from the development of your personality to overall how you make choices in life. Uh, how you don't make choices, your behavior overall. So the unconscious mind really refers to anything that influences you. It could be dreams, could be memories that you may or may not remember. Maybe you repress them. Um, it can be any thoughts, any desires, things that are basically falling below your conscious level of awareness. And so if something is below your conscious level of awareness, then you have no idea that it is actually going to influence you, but it does. So Freud contributes later on a treatment known as psychoanalysis, which is uh, one of the first, if not the first, psychotherapies created. And this is essentially asking lots of questions to a client, talking to them in uh, you know, whatever they're dealing with, and hopefully trying to find you know, what it is that deep down that is taking place that may be impacting them, that may be causing them problems. Um, other people also attribute something like a Freudian slip to Sigmund Freud and this is basically when you're talking about something and something happens to slip out it is not exactly what you meant to say but it is what was possibly on your mind and so on YouTube you can find lots of videos here of famous Freudian slips on news broadcasts and things like that usually they are sexual in nature um, but sometimes they can be funny Another early perspective is behaviorism, so there are really a few major behaviorists being John Watson as one of them, um, Ivan Pavlov, and then B.F. Skinner. The basic idea of the behaviorists is that they don't believe that you can study any conscious behavior because you can't see how it affects someone. So they wanted to weed out anything that was not observable. That way they can basically have verified proof through their own research, through their own studies, that it is legitimate. So Watson is the kind of guy that believed in really the environment shaping you. Um, he believed in the nurture aspect of the nature versus nurture argument, saying that you know give him a couple of babies and he may turn one baby into a serial killer. He might turn another baby into a doctor. It's all based on how that baby is raised in their environment, how they're nurtured, how they are uh, going to be conditioned. Another name for behaviorism is called stimulus response psychology. Uh, John Watson, random fact, but he's also one of the few psychologists that had a career outside of psychology. He went on to work for an advertising company. Another famous behaviorist is B.F. Skinner, and B.F. Skinner, even more than Watson, is strongly opposed to any internal mental events. Um, while they were uh, you know, people who worked under the same guidelines of behaviorism. B.F. Skinner was really, really adamant about organisms being nurtured and organisms not repeating any responses that had negative outcomes or possibly neutral outcomes, 
but usually repeating responses that have positive outcomes. So it's kind of like if you are doing something and you get a reward for it and you feel suddenly like that reward is purely because whatever you did was good, you would view that as a positive outcome. And so if that's the case, most likely you are going to do that again next time. So if you squashed a bug and you get a sense of pleasure out of that, you're probably going to squash bugs again. And so according to B.F. Skinner, he was really adamant that free will is an illusion and that the choices that you're making, the idea that you may have free will is more or less dictated by the choices that you make and then uh, how you respond to the environment giving you a result for that. Another area, uh, early field, is called humanism. And really, there are only two humanists that usually come up in the AP Psychology curriculum. So these guys are Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow. And humanism is all about basically emphasizing human potential, uh, taking a really optimistic view towards human nature. Uh, and the important thing to know about humanism is that they did not really support animal research. So where you have B.F. Skinner doing a lot of research with pigeons and John Watson um, with rats, the humanists didn't feel like anything tested on animals could be applied to humans, mostly because they don't have a self-concept. So for example, your dog, if those of you watching have a dog, your dog doesn't have a self-concept. It doesn't realize when it's getting sick, doesn't realize that time passes by. Every 365 days, your dog doesn't think, oh, it's my birthday, you know, let's celebrate, I hope I get a special treat today. Uh, now the owners might do that, but probably not your dog. So since your dog doesn't think about those things, it's just like also your dog not thinking about getting sick and you know, the fact that they may have been around for 12 years and getting old and dying. So dogs will act real skittish and they'll try to hide and isolate themselves because they're confused and they don't know what's going on. So humans, on the other hand, we do have a self-concept. So we know when we're sick, we uh, understand the ideas of death and how you know that can affect anyone. We understand the passage of time and so Humanism is really going to purely focus on just human beings and their overall potential, what they can accomplish, um, and that's pretty much it for the humanists. Uh, in terms of the modern history of psychology, you have some fields, mainly applied psychology, which is trying to use psychology to deal with practical problems. Um, this leads to clinical psychology. Later on, we'll have industrial organizational psychology, counseling. Today, we even have forensic psychology, which has quite a few different TV shows um, as that is a ba uh, background or basis. In terms of the other areas of psychology that will show up, we have the cognitive part of psychology, influenced heavily by Noam Chomsky and John Piaget. And we also have a biological perspective, which will be influenced a lot by split brain research um, through the studies of Roger Sperry. Uh, final points for the evolution of psychology basically is that only recently has psychology became a Western enterprise. So uh, most notably through now accepting culture as a variable. What this basically means is that psychology formerly has really only studied middle class white people. And so if you are not a middle class person or you're not white, most of the research that was done was really not beneficial to anyone. And so more recently now, psychology embraces culture as more of a variable. When you talk about the word culture, you're looking at religion, language, family history, clothing, geography, traditions. And so uh, now psychology is embracing a lot more than just middle class white people. Uh, final two areas of psychology we'll take a quick look at is evolutionary psychology and then positive psychology. And so evolutionary psychology is dealing a lot with its root word evolution. And so there's a big focus on reproductive success or anything that is basically going to make a particular species more likely to reproduce. And so there's a lot of Charles Darwin influence here with natural selection. There's a lot of biological influence focus on dominance, anything that leads someone to be more likely to reproduce is probably looking at evolutionary psychology. So chances are, if it's a question, you want to look for any of those things linked together. Final point is Martin Seligman, and he's basically the creator of positive psychology, which is looking to take psychology and not focus on all the negative things, but in turn, try to focus on how can we use psychology to benefit people 
look, we focus on the happiness in life and let psychology evolve from there. And that is it for now. So thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.